Hi, thanks for visiting Ted's Modeling Technique. I wanted to show you my workspace. So as you see my videos, you kind of know where I'm at and uh, what I'm doing, what I've got. Um, over here, here's a uh, little uh, memento of car shows I've gone to <clears throat> and um, over the years. Uh, actually, here's my, uh, my last uh, car I, I built up, 34 Ford Cabriolet. And, uh, you know, kind of kind of miss not having it. It was fun working on it. Always fun driving it around. Fun going to all these shows. You know, it uh, gives me good experience. Uh, I try to use the uh, real car experience. There's the interior shot. Real car experience in, uh, and pass that on into model building. Making it uh, realistic and uh, coming up with ways to build a model that I would actually <laughs> work on a car. Um, there's a uh, drill stand. Use it for modeling as well as uh, working on cars. Real car stuff down here is a welder, uh, jack stands, hydraulic jacks, more tools and whatnot. Got plenty of space in here. Um, well, here's a little Le Mans uh, die cast that I just pulled out recently. I just love the looks of this thing. It's so uh, almost aeronautical in uh, design and uh, airflow and whatnot. It's the uh, 2009 winner of, of Le Mans. They finally uh, beat Audi. I kind of was rooting for Audi. Here's uh, my everyday, everyday parts or tools, I should say. And, uh, you know, small stuff that I would uh, use, you know, pretty frequently. Um, some uh, individual aluminum tubing samples and whatnot, and I've got more in storage. And uh, my actual workspace here. You probably recognize the funny car frame from uh, my last video. And some of the parts around it that I've got separated for one reason or another, painting or, or um, you know, the order it's going to be uh, installed. Little engine, little visible engine is kind of fun to put together. Uh, first uh, fuel injected Corvette engine, I think it was 1957. And uh, here's the tires, wheels I'm going to be using on that funny car. I've already uh, scuffed them up to make them look new. And, uh, oh, yeah, here's uh, my old California license plate. Moved uh, from California here uh, just, uh, just last year. And a uh, recent present from my wife, kind of applicable here in the garage, and it is my hideout. Um, over here, got uh, model storage and... Um, you know, kits I'm going to be using, more kits than I could possibly uh, put together probably in a lifetime. Uh, right up here in the top, I've got uh, some detailed parts, engines, and miscellaneous uh, stuff. And then uh, just kits and kits and kits down here. Um, it's actually even, you know, deep. Got, uh, got them stacked back in here, too, if you can see that. But uh, over here I've got... Some uh, notes and uh, things on uh, drill sizes, hose, braid sizes for the Detail Master uh, fittings and whatnot. Always uh, referencing that to drill holes, the right size holes and everything. The normal space I'd be working at right here. And uh, got lots of room. We're going to be going over to the spray area next, airbrushing painting and whatnot. Wanted to give you a, just a quick glimpse of what I've got out here. And uh, we're let's, let's move over now. This is my spray painting airbrushing area. The uh, small paint uh, booth there does the trick. I have a little filter in the back. It's vented to the outside. Got an exhaust fan that pulls the air up. Uh, there's a little switch on the wall right over here for the uh, fan and the uh, and the light right next to it is for the compressor, air compressor down here for my Posh airbrush. I typically use a number three tip on the airbrush. The uh, shelf down below has all the uh, bottled paints and cleaners, some uh, cans of primer, whatnot. Uh, this is just the paint spraying area. The bottled paints and the uh, brushes are in a different area altogether. Uh, some spare Empty bottles over here used for running uh, cleaner through the uh, airbrush when I'm done. 
a uh, small area, but it's uh, out of the way. It's clean, uh, well ventilated, and um, it uh, turns out to be quite a nice place. A few of the things might be worth pointing out. The glues I typically use, uh, that Zap Medium is uh, one that I, I kind of like. It seems like it's the right thickness or viscosity for me. Uh, Plasta a Weld is another one for uh, bare plastic. And of course, uh, my kicker. And I love these um, applicators with the needle tips. Because, uh, you know, some of the stuff that's really runny, uh, you can control it. You know, the kicker, you can have just a drop if you want. Um, I really like that. Uh, over here, the uh, typical drill index uh, that does, you know, probably on everybody's uh, workbench. Um, I keep that here because I use them in a pin vise quite a bit. And then besides that, I also have uh, drills over here that go from a uh, 60 to a half inch. So, um, yeah, quite, a, quite an assortment. And uh, I guess while I'm over here, those shiny uh, silver bits right in the center, those are uh, plastic drill bits, and a good variety there. Really sharp tip to uh, uh, drill easily through uh, plastic without cracking it. Uh, a couple of other things I wanted to mention. Um, I bought this uh, pre-assembled, pre-wired, uh, actually it's a Boss uh, 429 Ford with dual carbs. And uh, you know, I didn't really know what to expect. As a matter of fact, I don't even know who makes it now. I found uh, this little brochure that has all the engines, but there's nobody's name on it, so I kind of forgot. Um, anyway, uh, what I, I do like about this, I haven't used it yet, is the little stand that it comes on. It's ideal for, uh, you know, just placing my engine on it while I'm, uh, while I'm working on it. Of course, you can flip it over and whatnot too, but the little stand is really handy. I don't know if you can see it there, but it has little bitty wheels on it. They're kind of like uh, the stand on this uh, little engine that I built to this Ravel uh, 280, no, yeah, 283 uh, fuel injection. Uh, something I'm going to be talking about here a little bit later. This little uh, bin of parts is uh, just my engine uh, accessories and whatnot. Uh, belts and pulleys and, uh, uh, you know, different uh, breather uh, caps and all that. Now, the only other thing that's in here that doesn't have to do with um, the uh, engine is these uh, chassis and uh, made by, um, oh gosh, now I'm drawing a blank here. Oh, curbside uh, dioramics. And uh, I don't think they're in business anymore. Uh, they're really difficult to get. And I've got uh, different types of chassis. They come with uh, independent front suspensions, uh, straight axle, really detailed. And the whole thing is, um, as a matter of fact, I've got one here kind of broken down. The whole thing is, uh, I don't know if I can get the glare off of that. There you go. Uh, it's all die cast. So uh, what I plan on doing is uh, using it in, uh, you know, more of a street rod and uh, uh, polishing it up. I, I practice with it and it polishes up really nice. It's got the, uh, like a Mustang II front suspension and whatnot. So um, that's going to be coming up a little bit later. And I really love these. I can't live without it. In order to get in there and see the detail that I like to see, I want it to be realistic. I want it to look like a real car. And uh, if you can't get in there and see it, you can't put it in. Um, so, I, you know, I can't live without them. I love them. Anyway, uh, questions, comments, please email me, tedsmodeling at gmail.com. Thank you.